So this video is not meant to be insensitive or point blame at any person or any one thing, any, any kind of way. Um, I wanted to make this video to bring up some safety awareness about the sport of powered paragliding uh, because some of you may or may not know uh, the King of Random YouTube channel, Grant Thompson, died in a paragliding accident about a week ago from the making of this video. And I myself am a powered paragliding pilot, and I started about five months before Grant did, and me and him are almost the same age. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk about a couple things that happened to him based on what we know, and some of this will be fact and some of it's minor speculation. Uh, but all in all, the safety rules to paragliding, the sport of powered paragliding still apply uh, because the conditions that he was flying through are to blame for what happened to him. Um, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is basically what happened. And what happened was that he took a collapse on his parachute. Uh, generally speaking, parachutes don't just collapse on their own. There's something that causes it. And what they said in the report, it was a change in the updraft. Well, it doesn't really say much. And there's more to it than that. I don't know if they had a paragliding expert review the video or if, or if the police just reviewed it and just looked at it and said this is what happened. Um, I'm kind of the person who likes to look into things a little bit more in detail and try to figure out exactly what happened and why it happened, not just, not just the fact of what happened. Um, so the area he was flying over was hilly. It was kind of a desert area. It was about 100 degrees Fahrenheit on that day. And it the wind conditions were about 10 to 15 miles per hour with gusts. And he was probably flying in the evening hours, obviously still in the daylight. And when you have sun hitting the surface of the earth, it's heating the air up, causing the air to rise. And then you got wind, which kicks off thermals. And if you don't know what a thermal is, if you've ever seen like a dust devil in a desert, um, that's basically what a thermal is. It could be small or large. Uh, they're not all visible like that though. Thermals are happening all the time during the day, no matter where you are in the world. Uh, they're invisible. You can see them if you see the buzzards flying around in circles, uh, but you can't actually see anything because there's no dust there to see it. So they're all over the place happening during the daytime all the time. And when you have higher winds, the thermals are spinning and they're more violent. And also you have the, the hills in the area uh, the, the larger hills, which is causing updraft and rotor and downdraft. And Grant was only flying around 100 feet when he took the collapse, which caused him to crash. So I don't believe it was a... This, this is really just speculation and kind of a best guess, but I don't believe it was the, the hills uh, causing a, a problem with the winds. I don't believe it was an updraft or rotor or downdraft per se. I believe that he flew probably through a, a thermal. And lower to the ground, the thermals are gonna be more violent than when you're up higher. And we're gonna talk about altitude in a, in a minute here, but usually if you're flying through a thermal, it causes your glider to go kind of crazy. And depending on the type of glider that you're flying, if it's an intermediate or beginner or advanced wing, uh, the more advanced wing that you're flying is gonna be less, uh, resistant to collapses. Uh, so I don't know what kind of wing he was flying, but if you were flying, say, like a beginner wing, uh, because it's more inflated and the edges are not as pointy, um, that all factors into how resistant it is to taking a collapse. But in any case, whatever glider you're flying, if you hit a thermal, especially in the daytime, and you're in conditions that are that windy, it's probably going to collapse pretty violently. Um, and that's probably what happened to Grant, is that he hit a thermal like that and caused his parachute to collapse, quick and simple. Uh, without actually seeing the video of what happened, it's really hard to say. Only the people who saw it are really going to know that for sure. Uh, but for anyone out there who doesn't quite understand uh, how to mitigate some risks in paragliding, that's kind of what we're talking about here. So I believe that's what happened. He hit a thermal, it caused his parachute to collapse. But only at 100 feet, he did not have time to deploy his reserve and allow it to open. Uh, so one of the things you can do to mitigate risks in the sport of paragliding or powered paragliding 
is to fly higher because you can take a collapse on a glider or a parachute if you're flying a powered parachute and a lot of times it will actually reopen or reinflate but if you're not flying high enough it's not going to have time to actually do that and it's going to swing you or slam you into the ground um, you're also not going to have time to react to deploy your chute if you're not flying high enough so uh, one of the things that's your friend in the sport of paragliding or powered paragliding is flying higher and unfortunately for Grant he was flying lower don't know why it, it could have been a choice it could have been that he was just taking off it could have been he was coming in for uh, emergency landing I, who knows um, but in any case uh, that's one of the things you can do to be safer is actually fly higher because not only is it reaction time or allowing your glider to reinflate or allowing your reserve to inflate before you hit the ground. Uh, you also are flying in air that's generally going to be more smooth. So the higher you go, the less turbulent the air is going to be. That's why actually commercial airplanes fly at a certain altitude above a certain atmospheric layer. Uh, so those things are what you can do to mitigate risks when you're flying. And then the other thing you can do to mitigate risk when you're flying a glider is flying only in the very early morning hours or the uh, very late evening. So maybe an hour or half an hour before sunset or half hour to an hour after sunrise. Because outside of the, that region, when the sun starts heating, heating up the ground, it starts kicking off thermals and the air starts getting pretty bad. Now there's plenty of people who are gonna say they've been in the sport for a long time they fly in all these conditions and they fly during the day no problem and that's great if you have experience in doing it and you know what to do and you understand the risks that's totally up to you but this is just talking about what you can do to mitigate those risks for whether you're a new or experienced pilot because even the most experienced pilots aren't going to be able to recover from certain things it's just impossible that's just the nature of it so it's pretty terrible what happened to him and I think about it now when I fly. And uh, my condolences do go out to his friends and family. And it's, it's really, really bad, um, bad situation for them to be in. And I'm no stranger to loss. Uh, I've experienced that myself. So um, I can't really imagine what they're going through. Um, I think that's really about it for this video. I just wanted to kind of... Uh, help people understand about what happened and why it happened. And uh, if you are thinking about getting into the sport to kind of understand what you're getting into and how you can be safer. Because if there's one thing that Grant would teach people is um, how to be safe. And he would want people to know why something happened and how it happened because that was his whole goal in life is to understand how things work in the world. So. That's about it. Thanks for watching. I hope that helps.